Hello, everybody. Welcome to the CT Sports Town Show. My name is Christopher Saunders, and this will be a little bit of a Connecticut boys basketball preview on the NVL side for the Seymour Wildcats. Joe Carfiello is with me. 22 years with the program. Doesn't look a shade over 45 years old. Just kidding. But no, but seriously. Oh, well, <laughs> I can joke with you because I've known you for a little bit. But seriously, man, what you've done, first off, welcome back. Always great to have you on the pod. Um, Thanks, man. Thanks for having me on again. It's, you know, what... The Wildcats run the last couple of years, man, has been something of, I don't want to say magical because I feel like that's kind of like an oxymoron, but I feel like it deserves a lot more attention than I think it's getting. I mean, do you feel that same way or are you okay with what's been getting? You know? Oh, no. Yeah, I think we've been, I mean, it's fine. It's not about that anyways, but I mean, I think we've been getting, we've been getting a good amount of attention and, you know, it's, it was hundred percent special, man. It's been a special couple of years. We've, we've had a good solid about, I'd say like eight year run. Yeah. Um, but then these last two years have been, you know, pretty historic as far as Seymour basketball goes, especially two years ago. You know, I was about to say, because you think about the runs that you've had, right? I mean, a couple of years ago, one of your boys made the free throw to send you guys against Brookfield, right? Then you think about the Fitch game. Yeah. I mean, like those those games, those little things, like sometimes you need some luck, right? You need the ball to go your way. Oh, yeah. And the runs yep. that you've had now, obviously you've had games where you have played well and the talent has shown, but like you said, the runs have been unique and they've been in different styles, but the memories and those exciting moments, I mean, that helps the kids now with a lot of them now going through that. Right. Oh yeah. I, I mean, even going into last year, I told the kids after that Brookfield game, I mean, you've been through everything <laughs> that, you know, it doesn't really get much, it doesn't get much difficult, more difficult than that. We were down 22 points at the half in that game. Um, and both of those, like, as you were saying, you know, having special moments and special games, those two games, the kids just, and you need lucky moments. Yes. But yeah. those kids just, they just kept fighting. Both those games were so similar in that they just kept fighting. Could have, could have, you know, kind of said, all right, we've had a great season, you know, it's going to end here tonight, but no, did not. And that was a credit to the seniors from two years ago with like the Dresdicks and the Bill and the Wave and those guys. Mm -hmm. And then the seniors last year with, uh, you know, Rossetti and, and injured and those and those guys. Although, I mean, the Fitch game, Joey was unreal. He, he probably had one of the best high school basketball games I've seen in that Fitch game. Really? 29 points, 14 boards, and I think he missed three shots. He missed three. Oh, boy. What a bummer. Yeah. But then, and then, uh, you know, he kept us in the game, but then Jaquan ended it for us. <laughs> Yeah, in stellar fashion, right? <laughs> just a little bit. I've, so many people come up to me and over that game and said that's the best high school basketball game they've ever finished, they've ever seen. I'm like, yeah, it doesn't really get much better than that. A kid hitting a three from the hash with a second left. I mean, it doesn't really get much better than that. I got to tell you, though, the Career Academy game, I think Ronan would give you a little bit of an argument there with that one against Darianne. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I, see, I didn't get a chance to see that one, but I heard about it. I heard about it. Yeah, I can tell you, my partner and I, Dave Grant, we almost fell off the Wilby table going crazy in that game i remember your call actually now that you mention it i remember the call yeah that was that i mean listen we you know better than anybody the nbl's got some great teams and some fun basketball and you know oh, so you match so up with some of the better teams in the other league you get good games i agree with you dude the nbl may not get the attention because of the fcac and some of the other conferences but there's some good ball i'm telling you and obviously seymour is one of those and you mentioned coach the dresics the villanuevas who i saw mm -hmm. You posted a couple weeks ago with Villanueva. I'm so happy that he's having success. And I didn't yeah. realize the makeup of him and the kind of player that he was. And shame on me for not having him on the pod or talking to him enough. But I'm really, really happy to see him doing well. But you think like the run, right? And I want to hit on this because it's not like this is the same team and players for four years. You go from the Dresics and the Villanuevas to the Rosetti. Now, Rosetti and Indrit were a part of the teams too. So I'm not trying to wipe right. them away. Oh, but yeah, big kids, yeah. you, you think about like those years with those kids and then transition to Paraj and Rosetti and then, you know, allowing the development of your twin, you know, your sons and other players. And then you get Ellis who came in for one year. Like right. it's different. It's different faces per se, different mm -hmm. levels of maturity and growth as a player. But the end result is such success. I think that's really cool. I do. Yeah, I appreciate that. And then, I mean, and as you said, like started with Daniel, we just have, we have great kids too. You know I mean? He's, a, and I said it in the, in the Twitter uh, or the X, whatever post that he's even a better kid than he is player. I mean, he's just a great kid. 
And he was a kid who could have scored more for us that year, but he just did the dirty work and knew that we had, you know, the Dreslicks and the injuries. And then Joey came out later in that his sophomore year where he was scoring a bunch. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there was only one, you know, one basketball to go around in those, in those, uh, in that year, especially that two years ago. But we have, have had program players that have developed. Um, Caden was starting since he was a sophomore, you know, injured was starting since he was a sophomore. Now Joey's been starting since he was a sophomore. So, I mean, there's always at least that one or two link from each grade to the next grade. So, I mean, that's also something to say as, as, to, as to why we've had success because there's always been that like mm -hmm. one or two guys that would carry over to the next year and then carry over to the next year. And now this year it's, it's you know, it's Robbie and Joey with, and then you have our other captain, Shane White, who played a lot, um, especially towards the second half of last year because he was injured a little bit in the first half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. I think, again, it, it's one of those situations where, I think, and you know, to see what Woodland did last year against Career Academy, which I'm going to be honest with you, that that had to be one of, and I said this, one of the biggest upsets probably since I've been broadcasting in the NVL. I don't think anybody could have seen that coming. And by no means am I trying to disrespect. It's just people would think, no. okay, Waterbury against the Valley, especially because of where Career was at that time. And then Woodland was right. still trying to find themselves. And then obviously they had a great game. They almost pulled off beating Holy Cross too. And I know no, they were a scrappy bunch yeah. and they, and they, they could shoot yeah. the ball and they, we were worried about them. I think, you know, we played them at, 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 at the middle school. I think it was the game right after they beat career. And uh, I mean, we pulled away a little bit at the end. I think we won by 10, but I mean, it was, it was a dog fight the whole game. We knew there, you know, they got a couple of those kids back too with them. How do you feel, Coach, with what have you guys have been able to accomplish? Obviously, what Woodland did last year, what Seymour's been able to do. I know I know Oxford's trying to find their way, and I know Coach Rosen will help get that. It's just going to take some time. Yeah, he does a great job, yeah. Exactly, he does. And obviously, what Kingsley does with Ansonia, punch him in for 13, 14 wins and make the playoffs, right? I mean, it's it's a guarantee, right? He does a great job. So, And I'm forgetting some other values. I know Derby's trying to find themselves, too. But the point is, I feel like – Seymour has in a lot of ways, with the help of other schools, kind of wiped away the the stigma of, okay, it's Waterbury and then everybody else as far as the NVO is concerned, maybe over the last X amount of years. Now the Valley, in terms yeah. of the outside, you guys have come to the party and you've made some noise. You've kind of muddied up the, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the ground a little bit, the rug, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, and it's funny you said that because I was going to mention that when you started talking about the coaches and the NBL and the city and all that. Um, that that's one of my, I guess I could say, favorite things over the last you know four or five six years is that we've we've gone on now to where you know we've beaten the WCAs, we've beaten the Crosby and the NBL tournament. Um, you know, we we hung with Career the year they won uh, the state tournament and the semifinals. I think we lost by eight or nine. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, last year's Wilby team was, was a great team, and I and I think at home they beat us by like seven. Crosby beat us by five. I mean, you know, you're not getting over the hump in every game, but you're there, and they know that you know when they come to play Seymour, it's not going to be maybe I could say like like it used to be pretty much. I mean, I think we've made it more of kind of a basketball school too. You know, mm -hmm. in, the, in the last eight, ten years. You know what, too, and I I truly do believe this, and maybe I'm wrong here, but I think. You guys beating Crosby in the play in the NBL playoff in the tournament a couple years ago, I felt like, in my opinion, is what started this run. Because I think that was the hump of like, if we can compete with that, then we can compete with almost anybody. At least the belief in the mind. And you guys have shown that. Because I've I've always believed if you can have that confidence, it shows because since then, it's like you guys have been on a run consistently. And even in some of the losses that you've had yeah. right against the top level of the NVL and obviously coming up short, they're not blowouts. You've had dramatic fashions with the wins. You've shown that you can compete. And I think not every loss is equal, right? Because you can gain from a loss, obviously, by the score. It's been impressive. It really has been. Yeah, I appreciate it. And, and you're, you're, you're right. I mean, that, that Crosby game really kind of propelled us, even though we lost – like I said, in the semis to WCA, we still played a pretty good game. And then, um, you know, went in the D4 tournament with a lot of confidence. And um, that year, I mean, yeah, we the year we beat Crosby, we had 15 wins. We were 15 and five. But if I remember correctly, we only, I don't think we really beat like the top Waterbury schools until later on into the, in the tournament when we, when we picked off uh, Crosby. Correct. And because they beat us pretty good at their place. We had a bunch of turnovers and WCA beat us pretty good at their place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, we had some. I, I think the game that really propelled us that year was almost back-to-back -back games. Um, that was three in a row actually at home. It was Naugatuck, Wilby, and Torrington. And Wilby was pretty good back then too. And, and we beat them all at home. 
And it kind of was like, all right, we're pretty good, you know. And then, and then we went into the NBL tournament. I was like, I think we were the four seed. And then we beat, uh, and we beat Crosby. That Crosby game definitely, you're right, <clears throat> propelled us as far as postseason, definitely. You know, and speaking of the NBL tournament, I don't know if I've mentioned this to you and the rest of the guys who are, because you're part of like as far as the decisions with the tournament, right? As far as with certain things. Yeah, I run, I'm the uh, chairman for the boys basketball. Yeah, for NBL. Okay. Yeah. So the re so what I'm trying Coach to say. Okay, so the reason why I'm going to say this is I think the decision to make for people who – because, again, people may have forgotten this. It's still, I think, in play where if you qualify for the state tournament, then you are able to play in the NVL tournament. Now, depending on seeding and such, there will be play-ins involved. So, obviously, if you're a number one seed or two, unless majority of the NVL makes it, you're, you're not going to play until that Saturday. But if you're a 7-8, seven, 6-7-8, eight, seven, eight, if a th three teams outside of that make the playoff, you're going to have to play in a playing game. Right. I think that's really – You have that playing like you did last year. Exactly. I really like that because it gives, A, teams who are, you know, in past years who would not have qualified. It gives them a game leading up to the playoffs so they're not sitting around for a week and a half, right? It gets them ready, and it kind of – And you right. never and know. We, and we had discussions yeah. on that because we all vote on that. And, mm -hmm. and we all – I mean, it, it was – it, it's it's staying in. So most of the coaches did did want it, but some other coaches made a made valid points too that if you play in that playing game, uh, you still have base. If you lose that playing game, you still have X amount of ten days before before the um, big tournaments, the state tournaments. So I mean, it's yeah. you know it's never going to be perfect. But I have I have always pressed for, pushed for that that any team that makes the state tournament should make the NBL tournament, in my opinion. And you know, I think it worked out pretty well last year. Um, I think so too. Yeah, you know, I'd rather not be in a playing game, but if we are, I'd, I'd love. I'd, I'd rather be in a playing game than not be in any game. You know what I mean? So yeah. Well, you know, I, I can see the argument of the ten days. Trust me, I, I I understand that. But I think the argument that I would have is well, depending on what team you have, if you're in a playing game, and let's say your team is new to playoffs in general, right? Let's say mm -hmm. Oxford, right? Oxford right. has not been to the playoff in how many years for the first time in school history when Rosen took over, right? right? Let's say they make the playoffs, but they have to play in a playing game. I think Rosen would be thrilled to see his team compete in a playing game just to see how they respond. Because yeah, the without question. That's a, yeah. that's a great point. Yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, just to have some kind of getting your feet wet into, you know, postseason play without a doubt is, is going to be beneficial to teams that maybe don't have that kind of experience. Yeah, or even like a Wolkett. I know Gene Petrucci has been telling me he's high on his kids. They may – I know they had a little bit of a low last year. They can come out, and if they won enough games and qualified, right? I mean, I think they – and again, if they have if they play terrible in the playing game, Rosen, Gene Petrucci, whoever could say, hey, you guys obviously did not play well, but now they can build on that because you know what? They have one more game rather than have that game be in the playoff and then they're one more game, you know? Yeah, no, that's a that's a very that's a very good point. And uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, again, if I was in the shoes of a of a team that had young, a very young, we're not young this year, but if I had a very young team uh, that didn't have a lot of experience in the playoffs, I would definitely want that playing game just to kind of get the feet wet, like you like you're saying, basically. No question. Yeah, it's awesome. It really is to be able to see that for sure, and hopefully things can continue with that. Um, now, before I let you go, Coach, I appreciate. You I don't see that going out. anywhere. What happened? I said I don't see that going anywhere for for a while at least the whole playing thing. I think it most I think it'll probably stick in stay in effect for a little bit. All right, good. That makes me happy. Not that it matters because who cares what I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, coach, before I let you go, and I appreciate you coming on. Um, what can people expect from this team? I know you mentioned some of the names and such, but what can people expect in general from the Wildcats this year? So this is a group, you know, I was telling yesterday at the meet the coaches tonight with the parents and all this, I'm going to be very sad for this year. This is a group that obviously, because my kids are there, was a group that I've coached and been with for many, many years since they were little kids. Mm -hmm. um, so they're going to be well-schooled in what we do because they've known it now for years. We're a very um, senior-laden team. I think this is the first year that I can remember that I'm going to be starting five seniors. Um, and then we have Anthony Cortello as, as, our, as our lone junior really coming off the bench. Uh, for right now, but you know, obviously things change. The so this year's team is going to be, I think, it'll be fun to watch. You know, up and down the court. Um, we've got a lot of two-way players, so that's that's important. You know, they, you always hear the, the term two-way players in the NBA, and all. We definitely have a lot of two-way players this year, so that's that makes it easier. It's not a kid that's going to, you know, score 16. It's not. I mean, Joey's going to be our leading scorer. You, you would think he's going to get a lot of shots, but he's not a kid that's going to take it off on the defensive end. He really does play just as hard on the defensive end. And you have and 
every kid is like that on our team. So, I mean, that's that's important because you will have – I've had them in the past. You'll have players that kind of just kind of leak to the offensive end and then, you know, maybe aren't, aren't taking defense as serious. Mm-hmm. I don't see that at all in this team. You know, I was just thinking too, and I think, I think you know, Joey has an opportunity to be one of the better – players in the NBL this year I think one two one a one b right and Mm -hmm. I think when you think about what he can do on both sides if there's any way to have the supporting cast help him defensively a little bit where he doesn't have to exert as much energy imagine what he could score on the offensive end with that saved energy you know right well I mean and they will like I mean Robbie's our dog on defense Robbie's a dog on defense so he's oh yeah yeah he's a pest and then you have uh, Logan Hamilton who had a really good JV last year who who also is a pest on defense uh Shane White plays very hard very he's you know six one doesn't weigh all that much but he plays a lot stronger and bigger than he is as the same mm-hmm. thing with like Jake George who you know is a football player plays for yep. us so I mean yep. there's a lot of kids that we have that um are definitely going to help on the defensive end it's not just going to be a you know one or two guy show over there but, hey, I'm looking forward to being able to see Seymour quite a bit for both the live stream and also for the radio. I'm looking forward to it, Coach. No, I appreciate you having me on. It was always good to talk. Always. I wrap things up in the CT Sports Talent Show. Next time, stay safe. Member CT stands for Canada. Get out. Enjoy your them all. Enjoy your day, everybody, and be well.